Imagine yourself lost in Guyana, now swimming with sharks, now giving a tour of New Orleans, now a cameraman, a drone pilot, a travel host show, a writer, director, editor. Congratulations, you've just lived part of my next guest's life. <laughs> Shane Reynolds has worked with Travel Channel, National Geographic, Discovery Channel, and the BBC. He's the owner of the mobile TV production company Color Earth and is a traveling one-man band. Today, we're going to get behind the curtain and look at the shows that let us mind travel and Shano himself, juggler literally and figuratively, <laughs> professional adventurer Shane Reynolds. What's oh, up? What's up? Welcome. Oh, Welcome good out to be of quarantine. Here. Yeah, good to be here. It's so fun not uh, just sitting around watching my mullet grow. <laughs> So you wear so many hats. When I was like researching this for this podcast, it was like such a long list. I had to pick just a few for your intro. Yeah. Of all the hats you wear, and I keep finding out that you wear more, which hat was the first hat? The first hat was actually music. I actually was was uh, recording and writing and recording music a lot and, and played in a few bands through college. I wanted to take music really seriously. And when I got to... Uh, when I realized like majoring in music would ruin my love for music, uh, I started looking in, in other directions and, and I just found that that video is very similar to that in terms of I, I loved being in the recording studio. I could spend 15 hours just mixing music. So it was the same kind of deal going out and shooting videos and coming in and and putting that stuff together, just a, a visual version. So. Yeah, that's interesting because you, what you just described musically is being the talent and being the production person. Right, And that's right, what right. you do now. Yeah, so yeah. Who I, would have thought? I, you know, I, I still, to this day, I don't know if it's it's just because I'm a control freak or I'm just, you know, easily bored or or I didn't have the talent around me to, to do it. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure I've come across great talent along the way. And I've uh, I've definitely gotten to this point where you know I'm I'm able to delegate more these days because I'm getting older and <laughs> you know I don't want to be a one man band, but you know growing up and in, and in, into this industry it was always kind of a kind of a kiss of death because it it just you know when I, I moved to Nashville to push music I started getting into video and, and everyone was like, so what do you want to do here oh, at this production company? And it's like, well, I, I want to edit and I want to shoot and I want to do that. And they're like, well, you can't, you can't do all those things, you know, like you got to pick one and, and specialize in it. Otherwise people think you suck at all of it, <laughs> you know? So, you know, like, but I like doing all of it, you know, and I think I'm okay at it, you know, and I look back now and I'm, I, I was terrible and, you know, thankfully I look back at it that way. Cause I think if you, if you don't look back at your early stuff and think it sucks, then you haven't grown. Then so you probably still suck. Yeah. Yeah, I exactly. Mean, yeah. Exactly. We should all look back at our past selves and be embarrassed. Yeah. That's like actually some sort of like right, goal. Right. Yeah. Right. That's funny that you mentioned about the people thought that you were maybe sucky at all those things. And well, what do you want to do? Because when I was thinking about how does Shane get these, you know, professional relationships with all these networks and stuff, which thing do you pitch? Um, that's been kind of the hard part too. You know, nowadays I have, I think five or six different demo reels that I've just kind of, I, I spent many years trying to make a demo reel that kind of explained everything, but it just never did. Yeah. So I just got to this point where like, okay, I'm just going to make a drone reel. I'm going to make an underwater reel. I'm going to make a DP reel. I'm going to make a host reel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then whenever people are asking, you know, do you do this? So yeah, here, <laughs> you know, so maybe it looks a little more like I'm focused in on that rather than all over the place. Yeah. So. That's kind of like a comp card for modeling. Yeah. You know, yeah. like if I'm submitting for something, then I might change out the pictures to be more, you know, commercial mom type role. If they right. want like sporty spice, yeah. then I put like my sports bra on yeah, and my yeah. leggings. And look super <laughs> sporty. <laughs> That'll be your next reel. Yeah, right. Sporty spice shame. <laughs> I, I definitely have had some Sporty Spice uh, reels in the past. So. Okay, well, we'll make sure yeah. to link those in the show <laughs> yeah, notes. <laughs> I don't know if you want to look at those. <laughs> so how did you, what was your first um, big break when it came to the production and or on screen talent? 
Um, you know, when I was in Nashville. I moved there in 98. And, um, you know, I wouldn't call it my big break, but it was, you know, getting paid to to do this kind of thing. Um, you know, I worked at a little production company called CJM Productions, and uh, they hired me as a, as a production assistant. And within a year or two, I was shooting their you know, as their main director, I was set designing for them. I was doing all their editing. I was hosting their music video show. I was doing all these things and still getting paid as a as a production assistant. But it was a really great experience while it lasted because it just it, it got me into working with all kind. I mean, we worked with everybody in in Nashville, and um, you know, got to do cool things like you know, go to stingray city with blake shelton or you know scuba diving with travis tritt and just random random things you know like Mm -hmm. and uh but it was always just kind of a grind you know so from 98 i guess i started professionally and then i didn't get like what you'd call the big break until probably 2006 when travel channel kind of called and said let's we want to do this one-man band show uh, and it was a prime time thing, and it was just a handful of us that are just hosting, shooting, editing our own shows for this Travel Channel show. So, you know, it it didn't become a career until then. It was work until then. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, so and and since then, it's just been you know once you, once you get your foot in the door, which is the hardest part, you know, then if you're good at what you do, then you know, all these executives tend to get turned over every couple of years and they all branch out to different places like BBC or to PBS or, you know, to Nat Geo. So that's where it leads to all these other opportunities. Okay. I, that makes so much sense. Cause I was wondering how you went from one to the other. Like I just imagined you on your computer, like writing emails or something, but it's not that way. No, it's, it's that it's it's recognizing opportunity. I almost didn't even submit to Travel Channel when it happened because uh, a friend of the family just sent me an email. It was like they're they're taking auditions online for a this backpacker show that where these kids go out for fifty bucks a day. And I was thirty years old at the time, and I'm like, they're, they're, I'm too old for this. So I threw it in the trash. And like twenty minutes later, I was like, eh. You know, at, at least someone at Travel Channel will be looking at my stuff. So yeah. I'm, I'm just going to submit anyway. So I pulled it out of the trash and did it. And it, I made it to the final round of interviews for that show. Didn't get it. And I, was, I drove all the way to Miami for that final interview and nothing. And they're like, well, you didn't get it. And I'm like, what an enormous waste of time. And like two days later, another exec said, we didn't want you for that show, but we want you to do this other one. So, you know, like... I could do a show for <laughs> where I'm doing everything and not working on fifty dollars a day. That'd be great. Yeah, and what show was that? Uh, that show was called uh, Five Takes. Five Takes. So it was these five backpackers with fifty bucks a day running around with each other. It was like a reality travel show. And the show that you actually got booked for was uh, not your average travel guide. Okay, that those I that I saw on the Travel Channel yeah. website. So yeah. that's where you got to do tours. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. And then when did Shane Untamed come into the picture? Uh, that we got that after in 2010. We did that from 2010 through 2011. And uh, that was based on a exec that I got to know real well at Travel Channel who moved over to Nat Geo. And, and you know, <laughs> they, they, they kind of, uh, you know, this was Bill Margle, who's, who's now at PBS. He's a, just a great guy. And he, uh, you know gave me this false sense of security in the industry because it was, when I got done with that, he pretty much brought me over there and it was like, Hey, they flew me up and we want you to pitch a show. And I, I, I kind of hardly knew the process of really pitching. So I just kind of sat down and I had a basic idea of what I wanted to do. And I let them, I just let them roll with it and let them kind of pitch the show for me. I was like, I want to go to weird places and weird animals, that kind of thing. They're like, right, right. And you're going to, do this and this with it too. And I was like, exactly. That's what I want to do. You know, and I'm like, I, I love it. Let's go. Let's, let's make this show. And we, so that was an incredible experience, but it also led me to believe, Oh, this getting shows is just so easy, you know? And, uh, and I've since learned that, you know, the grind's a lot harder than that. Yeah. But how much of that was real? Because I watched clips on YouTube, mm-hmm. you know, it's pretty searchable. And it was like you with a self-facing camera trucking through the jungle with your camera crew. You don't know where they're at. Right. And you're fighting off mosquitoes. 
how much of, of that is like, oh, guys, that was good. Do it again. And how much of it is like really recorded live as it happens? I think in most cases, uh, you know, it, this, this was all like one man band kind of stuff. Right. But it's it's grown exponentially since not your average travel guide. So that the, the Shane and Tame show, it was still billed as a one man band show. But it was, you know, I still had a shooter. I had, you know, yeah. The, the, a little bit of a of a support group there uh, as far as a crew goes and uh, so we were still streamlining everything to a point in which you know we we definitely had to go in with an idea of what we wanted we needed to kind of produce a little bit you know we just kind of hit action and let it happen right. so in that sense it was real and then we'd go back and see how it it all unfolded and then say, okay, now we got to fill in the blanks and tell that story. Right. So it was kind of like a reality show, but let's, when we're done, we got to embellish it to make it look really good. Or enhanced so, reality. Right, exactly. Yeah. Was there any like crazy situations with that? Cause it did look very um, out there in the middle of nowhere. Um, it, it just depended like, uh, you know, the Alaska show pretty much went without a hitch uh, Everglades went without a hitch, but we did stuff like, uh, you know, my cameraman in Madagascar got a stick like engorged into his leg, like in the middle of nowhere. So we had to kind of make decisions or do we pull it out? Do we, you know, we, so we did all this stuff on camera and Guyana was, was for real. Like we got in, we, from the get go, I knew we were dealing with a really shady dude and we got in the middle of the jungle and he kind of renegotiated the deal over and over and over until all the cash was gone, regardless of having double what he said it was going to cost and, and all the porters leaving in the middle of the night, basically. And, and we're just kind of making our way out with the gear and made a show out of that instead of the show we were trying to make. So, uh, there was a lot of reactionary production. So in that sense, it was very real as well. You know, I'd say the Guyana show was more real than, than any of them because we were dealing with a lot of bullshit. <laughs> so. That's crazy. That would be really scary. Yeah. I, I don't know if yeah. I'm cut out for that. And it, was, it was one of, you know, I, I, I think I really like watching shows like Naked and Afraid and yeah. things like that these days because I'm just like, oh, man, I, I kind of know how that feels. You know, and, and it's one of those where I look yeah. back and go, I, I'm, I'm really glad that that happened because it's one – it's that experience in your life like, well, if I can handle that, then this is no big deal. And you have proof. So no one can say, oh, man, you were exaggerating. You'd be like, actually, right, if you right. look at episode two, yeah. <laughs> you'll see that I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. I just watched Primal Survivor yeah. um, on, we got Disney Plus and uh, so the Discovery Channel, I think, is on there or Nat Geo or mm -hmm. something like that. But um, I'm also a big fan of uh, Josh Gates, Expedition yeah. Unknown. Yeah. Um, how do how do other people do? Does everyone get a job like that, just kind of on accident, or kind of how kind of how you did? I think you know the way I did it. I'm not sure how. You know, I I, I got to dive with Josh and shoot with him in, in Aruba one time, um, but I never got a chance to really dig into his process. But I think in most cases. People that end up doing this kind of thing are people that aren't afraid to try to craft their career into their lifestyle. So if this is something that they enjoy doing, they just kind of keep cracking at it and find ways to stay content until, you know, something happens. So like me, when I was just trying to make ends meet for almost 10 years, it was, you know, when I left Nashville, I moved back in with my mom. You know what I mean? Because I was like, I just want to not... And it was my choice. I wanted to just save every penny I had and buy more gear, build a production company and get to a point because I saw something that I was like, I think I can make something happen here. And we ended up doing a, a local TV show called Destination Soundcheck because they had this free, you know, we have this least access channel. We have no content. And I was already shooting a lot of travel stuff. And I'm like, well, I'll just put together a yeah. formatted show out of all this goofy shit that I've shot. <laughs> And, and all the late night drunks loved that show, you know, and it was that demo that I made for that show that I sent in to Travel Channel that they were like, oh, let's do this. So it, it's just a matter of doing what you love and, and keep doing it. You know, once you get to a point where you're like, oh, this isn't working, I give up, then, you know, that's the end of the road. So I like how you worded it that you integrate your lifestyle into your career and right. they kind of bleed into each other. That's 
yeah, I don't know if everybody is cut out for that. Some people really like that hard uh, line between work and home, as proven now with people having to work from home and right. really not liking it. Some people do, but there's there's the other side of the coin to that too. Because I tell people, you know, I, I look at people that have that nine to five job, and even though that's not something that I'm cut out for by any means, I look at them with a little bit of envy that they can clock out and go home and just, yeah, you know, that's it. They can they can clock out, and right. and, and I can't ever clock out, and that's right. why. You know, the only things I have in my life is like surfing and snowboarding and scuba diving. I think those three yeah. things are the things I can do where my brain turns off and I can just focus on what's in front of me. And so that's why I have to do that stuff or else I'll just go crazy. Yep. I am the exact <laughs> so, same way. That's yeah. why when people are like, oh, one day we'll have like our our watches will be able to communicate on the beach right. and then like surf coaches. And I do see the advantage for like surf coaches and stuff, but I'm like, for me, part of it is just not being connected and not counting anything, not tracking anything, not, right. you know, if I can, not being aware of time, just being on my board in the water. So right. I feel you. You mentioned diving earlier and you got to dive with Jacques Cousteau's grandson, Philippe, yep. and his wife. Tell me about that. Uh, that was one of the coolest gigs I've ever had because it was one where... Uh, it was for Caribbean Pirate Treasure on on Travel Channel. Uh, we did two seasons of that. And, you know, one, the, the crew that they put together, it was headed up uh, by Bob Asher over at Critical Media. And, and the dude is just a nonstop character. And, uh, and it just became a family really quick because we all just we all just clicked. And that's often rare, too. A lot of times we're just it, big crews just kind of get the job done. And, you know, you never talk to them again. But you know, and Philippe and Ashlyn were just amazingly genuine people, uh, which was nice. <laughs> you know, I've worked with talent that I that I didn't walk away thinking the best of in the past, and uh, and it was also a gig where I wasn't one man banding anything. I was I was specialized. I was uh, you know shooting B cam. I was shooting uh, stock footed. You know the 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 beauty shots and establishing mm -hmm. shots, and then uh, cross shooting for different scenes and then uh, doing all the underwater stuff. So, and then, then second season I was doing more of the drone stuff and things like that. So I actually had the best gig on the show aside from hosting it, you know, because when, when the guys were doing the, the, the meat of the story, like we're going to cross shoot the, them talking to this Shane, why don't you just go explore the old town and get some establishing shots. And then when we're out diving, looking for treasure, you know, the whole crew is sitting, getting seasick on the boat and me and Ashlyn and Philippe are down, you know, looking for treasure. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. And you found some. Yeah. I even found some, but while I was shooting, really, you know, I'd just look down and like, you know, kind of dig around and, you know, I found a, a bottle from like the 1700s and, uh, and then a full gin bottle from like the 1800s that was perfectly intact. And, uh, uh, Ashlyn found a, a copper ingot. Uh, and we genuinely just like I was I just had the camera on her when we just found this oh stuff in there. So there, it was a really, really cool experience. It was a great gig. And that was where was that again? Where mm -hmm. uh, we were all over the Caribbean. We were all over. We, we went to Ecuador, Peru, oh. uh, Belize uh, and, and all over the Caribbean. So. so was all that treasure at a World Heritage site? Uh, we found, where did we find treasure? We found treasure in Antigua. We found treasure in St. Thomas. So no. Um, uh, the, the, probably some of the best treasure we found was in the harbor at, uh, where the cruise ships come in and out hmm. in St. Thomas. Yeah. Cause the ships, they turn up yeah. the, the just, soil or the yeah. sand and exactly. So you got to keep those things? Uh, no, nah, no, of course. No, not. I didn't keep any of it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely uh, not. No, that that would not be no, ethical. I didn't do any of that. Mm -mm, nope. Um, well, Elsian, your daughter, is quite the rising star. If she yeah. became some on-air talent, what uh, mistakes would she would you want her to avoid? Ooh, there's a good question. Um, man, what would I want her to avoid? I, you know, she's already talking about every every time I put the camera on her, she's already saying. Make sure to subscribe, you know, hit the bell button. All, you know, she's, she's kind of born into this and 
You know, I think mostly my fear for her is just thinking that, you know, her life is a reality show ultimately and just being and not not gaining a filter to what she's going to put out there, you know, because a lot of that stuff, you, you make one wrong move. I, I still look back at my history and think, you know, without social media and all these things, you know, if we make a mistake in our life before the time we're 14, then we could be known for that for the rest of our lives. And, and nowadays, everything we do is under a microscope. So it's, I, I don't know how kids don't get to a point where they're like, you know, I, I don't even think you can move and start over anymore because it's all still, it all still exists. So I don't know. I just want her to be smart about what, you know, when the camera comes on, you got to be smart. <laughs> so. Yes. And there's a difference between reality Right. When no one's watching and when right. the camera is rolling. Exactly. Yeah. And it's important to be, you know, genuine in both circumstances, yeah. but to be grounded yeah. in the reality part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's tricky parenting yeah. um, area there for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that um, our, you know, the tagline of the show is stay curious and grow. Yeah. And part of why I love to have you on the show was because you're really are like a paid adventurer. So, and your adventure isn't just in the obvious, like I'm in the rainforest, <laughs> can't right. find my cameraman, yeah. but it's also in the, um, okay, I'm going to pivot, you know, um, COVID-19 hit. You're like, all right, now I'm going <laughs> to redo, redo my reel for the yeah. seventh time. And I'm going to um, present myself in this way. So the flexibility and the adaptability, I think is an essential part of adventure. Yeah. You know, they're, yeah. they're one and the same. So if you were going to give um, people advice, people that do work a nine to five job, or even people that are, you know, in the acting camera world, what advice would you give them to be more adventurous and have that habit of being adventurous? Um, I mean, I think ad being adventurous is a very subjective term to, to everybody. You know, what, what I find adventurous you know, a lot of people might find ridiculous. So, um, you know, if I could relate it to everybody, I guess I would just say that, you know, being adventurous is, is not being afraid to, to take risks and to do things that, that make you feel more alive or make you feel scared, which makes you feel more alive. Um, and I think, you know, the times that we're facing right now is, is a really great example of, you know, nothing is, is secure. Nothing is safe. I, I took the, the unsafe route working for myself and trying, you know, chasing my dreams. And, you know, while other people are like, I like a steady paycheck. And now, as I've said my whole life, I don't think there is such a thing as a steady paycheck. And we know now that that's <laughs> very, very true. So, you know, I think a lot of people can maybe reassess where they're at in their life right now and use this downtime to say, you know what, it, it wasn't worth doing this thing that I don't want to be doing. Um, you know, it was probably a better idea to, to take that risk and it's not too late to do that. So I just think it's, you know, it's easy for me to say that because me working a nine to five, doing something I don't like, I develop health problems. So I get, I get to it like anxiety overtakes. So it, it now, so I have to do that. You know, I don't really have a choice in it. Um, but, but people that have a choice in it, you know, I, I still would say take the harder route. Yeah, yeah. Or at least take a hard look at it now yeah. that we have a po moment of pause, kind of, right. you know, to, right. to reevaluate. Yeah. Um, you, real quickly, because I know we're running out of time, but you had a really cool uh, long-form documentary of our Emerald Coast. Mm -hmm. Can you share about that and... Is there any update on how we can watch it? <laughs> yeah, that was supposed to premiere April 4th and 5th. Mm -hmm. And of course, that didn't happen because we were doing it at Sudson Cinema, a, yeah. a small local historical theater. And um, it's been moved to mid-May, which is probably going to get moved again. Uh, it's just a project, a historical project on the Emerald Coast that focuses mainly on Fort Walton, Okaloosa Island, Eglin, and uh, Destin. And it, you know, it, we, we've been working on it for like almost a decade trying to get it off my back. And now that we're finally done with it, I can't get it released. Yeah. So, you know, uh, hopefully have a, an update on when we're going to premiere it. And okay. ultimately it will be on my Vimeo channel to, for rent or, or download. So we're hoping to premiere it before we do that. Yeah. So we'll and where see. can people keep up with your creative 
productions? Uh, everything is, you know, all my social media is on my, my website at colorearth.tv. And, um, but on screen stuff, uh, typically is, is going to be on my YouTube channel, Shano goes and, uh, Instagram is more of my daily updates on, on what we're doing. And that's at color earth pro. And, uh, you know, and there's still a lot of stuff on uh, travelchannel.com. So there, you know, we did a few different series like uh reel is a really good one with King of Phillips. You know, I produced and, and edited and shot that and, uh, uh, top 10 locals list was a really fun show that, that I did for them. And, you know, so there's, there's a lot of stuff online to kind of, fill the the void right now <laughs> so. or binge depends how yeah, you see it yeah well this has been awesome if you are listening or watching to this and loved it make sure you share it with a friend and all of the links that he talked about the youtube instagram the long form documentary those will all be clickable links in my show notes which you can get via email just text real r-e-a-l to 66866 this has been awesome thank you so much for coming yeah in. thanks that's, for having me that's a wrap Had a great Woo! time <laughs>